So in this case, I want us to consider this part of our DC generators. Remember, we talked of the DC machines. As I say that as part of our DC machines, we have the DC generators, we have the DC motors as part of your DC machines. So I want you to go through the DC generators, the function of a DC generator, the operation, all that part. I want you to understand even the part of your commutation as you uh, at work with your textbook, uh, the part of sparkling as you at work with your textbook, the methods which are used to reduce the sparkling and improve commutation. Uh, we're going to talk about that in revisions, but I want you to first work that part of your notes as you work with the textbook. So in this case, the part that I need us to work on is the first of part of our calculations, which is to consider the EMF. As we consider our generators, we are also going to see that uh, when you are to consider uh, also on the motors, the DC motors is there also, which is called the EMF equation. But here I'm considering on DC generators, the EMF equation. If you are to consider on your generators, because you're going to later on, on another classes, we're going to see different connections that can happen on our DC generators, be it in series, be it in parallel, we are going to notice different. But in any connection that you are going to have, the EMF equation states that we can calculate E, which is the generated EMF for a generator from the formula, V plus IA times RC. Uh, this is RAC, where we are referring to V, which is our terminal voltage. So there we talk of the terminal voltage. IA, which is your amateur current. Your amateur current. We are not talking about the diagram here, guys. We're going to talk of the diagram later on. This RAC, it represents on its own, the wall of this, the resistance of the armature circuit. Take note, I'm saying the resistance of the armature circuit. Of the armature circuit. I'm not saying the resistance of the armature. If I want to refer to the resistance of the armature, I can just refer it as RA like that. But when I'm saying the resistance of the armature, I'm talking about where the armature current flows as it is in full as it is where the armature current flows. So it can be like that, that the armature resistance is equal, this armature resistance of the circuit is equal to the armature resistance direct. It can be equal depending on the circuit that you're given. Maybe there's a series field that is there. It depends with how it will be given later on. So this generated EMF, the one that we are having from our EMF equation, like I said, we are obtaining what we refer to as the generated EMF, can also be calculated using this same, uh, using this other formula, which is two times the flux times the N, which is your speed, times P, which is your pair poles, times Z over 60 C. This is the formula that we can also consider on this formula we can also calculate the EMF that is generated where we are talking about the useful flux, the useful flux, which is the useful magnetic flux. Remember, your useful magnetic flux from our introductions, we talked about this, which is measured in what? In Weber's, which is now the speed. We are talking about the speed, and this speed must be in revolutions per minute that is it must be in revs per minute talking about p these are the pair poles number of pair poles the pair number of pair poles then z this is the total number of conductors that will be given there total number of conductors all right so the 60 that we are seeing is for the speed being in revs per minute. We are converting the speed to revs per second. That's why it is being divided by that 60 that we are seeing there. And also, 
like I said before, uh, remember if I talk when I talked about the DC machines, I talked about the C for the lapping windings and the wave windings. So the C there can be affected to be equal to two when it is a wave winding. When they are going to state that one, it's a wave or it's a it's a lap. That part they are supposed to to specify. What is it that you are to consider there? So C is supposed to be equal to when it is a wave winding. C is equal to 2P when it is a left winding. So these are the ones that we are going to be working with as we are to deal with the EMF equation. A question can be there where the first formula has to be used. A question can be there where the second formula has to be used depending on the information. Anything can be calculated. So this can be also referred to any DC machine. This formula here that we are seeing can be referred to any DC machine, meaning to say it can also be used when you are called to consider a motor. So with these formulas, considering a DC generator, I want us to see how questions can be given in terms of our EMF equation. So in this case, we are given that calculate the speed at which an antipole, so according to this information that we are given, we asked you to calculate the speed. We do not know the speed. So let's see what is it that we need. We need to calculate the speed. At which an A to pole, meaning to say from the A to pole, you can determine P, the number of pair poles. How many poles are there? There are eight. So you divide by two. So meaning to say we've got what? Four pairs. Remember P, the pair poles. How many pairs do we have? Wave wound. So it's a wave. So C is equal to what? C is equal to 2 when it is a wave. It's a series generator. So in this case, we're not into those calculate those drawings. No, no, no. On a series generator, what you just need to understand is that we are going to talk about the part of excitation where you'll be having the series field connected in series with what? With amateur. So you, that is the part that is important there. The series field will be in series with what the amateur that is the most important part meaning to say the amateur current is the same remember i talked about where the amateur current flows to give us the resistance of the amateur circuit the resistance of the amateur circuit is affected where amateur current flows so that we are going to have much emphasis uh, in more questions like in more examples that we're going to have so this is what we had there with 786 amateur conductors. So we're given Z number of amateur conductors, 786 must operate in order to produce a terminal voltage of the terminal voltage. Remember I said it's what? It's V, 375 volts. The amateur and the series field have resistances, these ones respectively as they follow each other. So the amateur is the first one. So the amateur resistance you're given as 0, 0,1, the series field as 0, 0,2. So the series field is written like this, which is 0, 0,2 ohms. These are resistances. Then they are saying, take the useful flux per pole to be what? 6,5 milliwebbers. We are given the useful flux per pole to be what? 6,5 milliwebbers. And the amateur current to be 30 amperes. The amateur current is supposed to be given as what? As 30 amperes. This is the information that you want, and they want you to calculate the speed. So you, this part, with this part of our EMF equation, where the speed is, we can see the speed is there. All right, let's consider the formula where the speed is. We saw that there's a formula of E, which consists of the speed. That is 2 times the useful flux times N times P times Z over what? Over 60 C. The speed is there from this formula. Let's try to manipulate and make this the subject of the formula. This is same as over 1. You're going to cross multiply. And then you're going to divide the whatever that you have. This is going to be 1 times this is going to be 2 flux N P Z is equal to 60. C multiplies the E. So it will be 60 C E like this. Remember, we need a speed. So 
How can you find the speed? Simply divide by these two the flux, P and the Z. Divide by those. Uh, so many say, therefore, the speed was going to be given as 60 CE. Like I said, you divide by what you do not need there. You do not need to flux uh, the P and what and the Z. And from this formula, we could, okay, let's figure out. Are we having all this? C is given because we are told that it is what? Where? So C, we have it. But we do not have E, the generated EMF, as you can see. It's not there. The generated EMF is not there. The purpose, they're there. The number of amateur conductors, the total number of amateur conductors are there. But E is not there. So how are we going to obtain E? Because E was supposed to be have obtained from this formula. But there is no speed and they want you to calculate that speed. So many would say there is a need for us to use any formula where E can be. We are considering that this is what? What is it that you consider? A series generator. This is a generator that you have. This is a series generator that you have to consider. And as I said, as you consider any generator, whether it is a series whether it is in shunt e can be calculated from v plus the amateur current times the amateur resist this is the resistance of the amateur circuit resistance of the amateur circuit according to the amateur circuit what is it that is affected according to the amateur circuit this is a series like i was saying so in the series the amateur circuit where the amateur current flows there is amateur resistance. There is the series. There are these two in series. So this formula now can be manipulated into V plus IA like this. You combine now the upper part of the amateur circuit, part where the amateur current is going to flow. It is going to flow affecting amateur resistance and affecting the series field. So you have to add the amateur resistance and the series field. Remember I'm saying, resistance of the amateur circuit not just the amateur this is the resistance of the amateur but when you consider the amateur circuit that's where the amateur current is flowing as it is complete so you're going to see that the e was going to be obtained from this formula the e that is missing here so that e could be obtained because we have the voltage terminal voltage the amateur current we're given all these are there so what is our terminal voltage substitute? That is 375. So you're going to obtain uh, 375 plus the amateur current. What is it that we have? We are given 30 amperes into RA and RS in series. So RA and RS they are given. That is 0, 0,1 plus uh, 0, 0,2. So the other one is given as 0, 0,2. So use your calculator properly you are going to obtain the generated EMF, which is 384 volts. Using the generated EMF that we just obtained, you can now obtain the speed. And as we saw from this formula, having over 60 like this, it means the speed to be calculated must be in what? In reps per minute. So we are going to substitute now the E that we calculated. So when you say our N was going to be 60, times C, according to the type of winding that you're given, C is wave, which is two, uh, for a wave, which is two, uh, times E, you calculated, you generated uh, EMF. Uh, this is going to be divided to two times the useful flux, as we are given uh, the useful flux, we have it, the pair poles, we have it, and also Z is 786. We're gonna substitute these values as they are for useful flux. Uh, 6,5 milliwebers times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. Remember our pair poles, it was 4. And the number of amateur conductors, it was given as 786. You now have the speed in what? Revolutions per minute, revs per minute. So that was going to give us 1,127,422, uh, which is what? Revs per minute. Uh, if you use your calculator properly there. So they can ask you questions uh, depending with information that you're given. Sometimes they'll give you information, which is direct. They'll give you information where 
everything is there. You are given, your N, you are given everything. They ask you to calculate the generated EMF. The used EMF, you just substitute your values, you're done. But only consider that you do not have those values. Now you have to consider what is the EMF equation, considering for a generator. So a generator, the generated EMF is supposed to be a plus. You're going to notice another one when we are to talk of the uh, DC motors on their own. So this is what we had till we meet again.